Hello, hello, I'm Liao. So today we're gonna to talk about VIT. VIT is a next generation build tool created by Evan Yu, which is also the creator of Vue.js. Interesting story. Vue is view in French, which is like a UI view. And VIT is also a French word for quick. VIT. So you have to pronounce it as VIT, not VITE or VITE or whatever. It's VIT in French. So before we start, talking about how we can use VIT for development and production, probably we can take some time to talk about VIT's most powerful feature, which is the instant server start for the dev server, right? A lot of times people say that it is a no bundler. So what does that mean? Because it means that there's no bundling involved in the dev server. So how is that even possible? I remember we talked about Rollup and Webpack in the previous videos. If you haven't watched that, you can uh, click on the links on the corner or in the description. So in those two videos, when we talk about Rollup and Webpack, we talk about how we can use them to bundle your code, right? Because bundlers does not know about modules at all. So you bundle the code. And after that, we talk about uh, for development, uh, there's a concept called a dev server and a watch mode, which means that uh, the tool itself starts a server uh, so that you can vis you can browse the build bundle code from your local host and the watch mode itself watches for file changes right it watches all the source files that you write and whenever there's a changes in them the build tool rollup or webpack will rebundle them and recreate a new bundle and and then you will have to refresh your browser to view the latest bundle of the code Right, that's what we have talked about so far, right? But things has changed. Me remember the story I told you about uh, in 2015, ES modules was introduced as part of the ES6 specs. Right, so back then, Rollup was the forerunner uh, about trying to do a new way of bundling. Of course, there's a lot, a lot of other um, pioneers as well, but we talk, we, we just chose one example, which is Rollup. We talk about how Rollup um, tried to leverage on this new syntax. And things has changed so far, right? Now it's 2021. So yes, last year, um, what we noticed is that all the modern browsers, all the browsers that most developers use, which are mostly modern because we like to upgrade our browsers to the latest version, has now supported modules by default in the browser. So module systems are inbuilt now. So the, so the statement of saying, yes, modules are not supported by browser is no longer true. You can use ES modules in the browser right now. You can use, uh, as long as you specify a script type as modules, you can use ES modules. So what can we leverage on with this new thing that's happening with us? Well, use ES modules. Well, it may not be recommended to use ES modules right now in production because of a few reasons, right? This is important. You can't just say you can't use ES modules. Well, you, you can, but you need to be aware of some of the concerns of using ES modules right now in production. Well, there's two, right? First of all, uh, as a moderate size project, you probably would have roughly 100 over modules. Right, so fetching 100 over modules individually into the browser takes a lot of time, right? It depends on how fast your network is, but you will have to incur 100 over round trip time. Right? Even if you have like uh, uh, HTTP push to push all the files down, that, that still t individually fetching all of these files still takes time. And you can't uh, leverage on features such as like tree shaking, which is already prevalent and widely used, supported in the mod, uh, in most all almost all of the module bundlers. What that means is that uh, if you only import one function from one module, then the rest of the function that is exported from the modules is not included in the final bundle. But uh, if you are using ES modules directly in the browser. The browser wouldn't know like what parts that uh, it needs to download, right? It just download that file, right? The whole module file is downloaded and eventually you will just realize you just need one function, 
right? So that is very wasteful. Uh, so which means it will lead to even smaller modules because you want to reduce the wasteful, uh, reduce the waste of fetching over fetching code. Then you have even smaller modules, uh, like more modular size modules, which means even more network time to download, like more things to download, right? More more network requests because uh, if if you have if you haven't optimized in terms of like your network uh, call, then probably it will be like more round trip times happening uh, in the browser. Right. Secondly, if your project, if your module is deeply imported, what that means is that say for example, if you have module A, imports module B, which imports module C. What happens in the browser when it tries to import, uh, it tries to evaluate this uh, project, is that it will download module A, parse it to figure out that it needs module B. And only at that point, it will download module B, parse it, and then it realize that it needs module C in order to evaluate module B, right? It will download module C, parse it, and since it does not require anything, it will evaluate it, and then only modules B can be uh, evaluated because now only it gets whatever it's importing. And then after module B is evaluated, only now you can evaluate module A because that's where the exported stuff from module B is, is available in module A. And, and here you can see this is like a network, uh, like a module request import waterfall where you have to wait for module A, B, C, and then all the way back in, right? So if your, mod, if your project has all this kind of setup where you have your root of entry of your project imports a component which imports another component and that component imports another component, imports another component, you see that you there's a lot of waterfall requests have to wait for each other to be downloaded and parsed and then you there's no parallel work happening. I mean, if you if you're using a module bundles, uh, that is a solved problem because module bundles can basically analyze all your modules that you have and uh, parallelize like bundles all of them together as well as if they have uh, split into smaller files, it knows that it needs if it needs both of them, it knows to load both of them at the same time and then evaluate them when both of them are available, right? So that is something that's that these two are the reason why you can't really use ES modules in production right now. But that does not stop us from using ES modules in development mode, right? All your files, all, all the all the gotchas that we mentioned um, ba is based on an assumption that you know, fetching files is costly. So you, you want to prevent that, right? When we say network, uh, like a request waterfall is costly because each, each level takes time. Each round trip takes time. It's, it's costly to fetch things over the network. But that's not true in local environments. All your files are already available in your local file system. You just need to serve them, right? So that is very fast. It's instant. It's almost instantaneous compared to fetching it over the network. So in local dev environment, why not using module? Why not using ES modules directly? And for production, we build using our module bundlers, right? So that's where Vits comes in, and a lot of other contemporaries. Uh, such as um, Snowpack, uh, WMR, they works in principle, they work sim um, almost the same thing, right? They are similar class of tools where they were being known as like the no bundler, uh, instant uh, dev server, um, things like that, right? So um, the reason that, that I just talk about Vits instead of the others is that, um, well, mainly just because I'm lazy. I don't talk about all of them. Uh, but if you understand in terms of the concept, how it works, uh, hopefully this video can explain that to you. Then you can apply, you can transfer that knowledge over to Snowpack and uh, WMR, right? And, and that's the goal of this series, right? We try to cover different kinds of bundles and later on, we are going to talk about high level concepts that will be able, that will, that sh hopefully will be transferable to all, um, tools, all module bundlers out there, right? Whether it's Webpack or Rollup, or whether it's Vits, uh, even whether it's ES Builds or Snowpack and WMR, right? You are, yeah, they, they are all, hopefully they are all um, transferable. 
right? Speaking about transferable, right? If you, uh, if you have a very basic web app set up, right? Uh, it makes uh, it sounds easy to have like you know serving modules, ES modules on the dev server and bundle and build it for production. But if you have a lot of customization, how do you sync that up? Um, for dev, for development and for production, because you're basically doing two, two different things, right? You're serving, um, you're serving modules directly on the local environment, uh, local dev development, but you are bundling it on the production. How, how do you sync that up in, how do you sync your configuration or custom modules, um, say CSS, uh, custom configurations, or uh, things like that? How do you sync it across? Well, that's, where Vits comes in, right? Although I say, you know, you can use modules directly, it sounds like Vit has not, uh, there's nothing much needed to be done by Vits, but actually there's a lot of things that's handled by Vit. So these are the things that's being handled by Vit. And out of the box, you can already use TypeScript, CSS, um, without having to install or configure anything, right? Of course, you can make configuration and that configuration will be applied uh, across both um, development mode or the production mode, right? And later on, we're going to talk a bit more in terms of plugins. How can you have plugins that, um, that works on both sides? So enough of the blabbering. Now it's time to take a look at how we can use Vit for development and production. Let's take a look. To get started, let's use Vit to scaffold our project. Firstly, let's type in um, yarn create Vit. If you are using npm, it will be npm init vit, um, or pmpm will be pmpm create vit. Um, running this will actually get will actually fetch the create vit package from npm and then runs it. Right. So now this uh, scaffold uh, this tool create vit will try to ask me some of the some information. Right. So here let's create a folder called test vit. And immediately you can see that Vit is amazing in terms of uh, providing a scaffold with um, that supports all sorts of frameworks that's out there, right? You can use for Vit for vanilla JS, Vue.js, React, Preact, Lit, Svelte. Um, I'm just gonna use vanilla JS, right? We're gonna just look at the pure JavaScript and without TypeScript. We don't need TypeScript for now. So this is created. Okay, that's fast. Let's go in, test Vit. Yarn. Um, okay, that's quite fast as well, right? We are done with like roughly five seconds and now we can run Yarn Dev to get started. So um, if you visit this URL, you'll see this hello vids uh, welcoming us. So um, let's, let's, let me open another browser. Uh, sorry, open another console. Uh, let's see, project test vit. Gonna open up my ES uh, VS code and we're gonna open side by side to look at um, the code that we have over here. All right, so let me zoom it up. So for vit, the setup is um, the, the scaffold project, the boilerplate project we created. It's quite plain, right? Uh, you can see here there's a few files. We don't see much configuration file, but we can create a config file later on. So here we have this index.html file, which is now the entry point of your application, right? Uh, so when you start Vit, Vit will serve this index.html file for you. So if I come over here, uh, maybe let me try to remove everything and say, hello world, uh, save it. You just see that this um, reloads immediately. You can see a uh, updated uh, the, the HTML is updated immediately, right? So this is the hot module reloading in works. Um, over here, we can uh, fetch any JavaScript file. So the scaffold creates this main.js for me, but I don't really like this. Uh, let me create another file called uh, full, okay, full.js, right? And, and this will alert full. Um, save this and I can come over here and say script type module um, source foo.js. If I save this, immediately you see hello world and also this script is being imported, um, served, 
and you can see my alerts happening over here, right? Okay. Uh, I can remove this. Um, I can now, uh, because this is using a modules script, then I can use, I can write yes modules, right? I can write import bar from bar .js, uh, console log bar. Uh, now, because it's not existing, you see that uh, Vitz has this nice uh, alerts, um, this model that says that what kind of uh, compile error that's happening so that I don't have to jump over to look at it in my console. But also, although the same information is also here in the console. Right, so now I need to create a bar.js file. Uh, let me create that right away. Bar.js export default bar. I save this. Uh, yeah, I don't have to refresh. And then inspect element, you see now. Uh, wait, wait. Probably I need to. Let me, let me try and refresh again. Oops, what's happening? Console bar. Right, someone, oh, okay, sorry. There's a filter on my console, right? So the, uh, sorry, my bad. So hope, I, I believe the hot reloading works. It's just that it's not showing up, right? So because of my console filter. So if I save this, you can immediately see that it's consoling bar right now. Um, so the modules import works. And this can be a uh, TypeScript as well. So if I change this module to be TS, Right, there's an error. It's okay. Uh, let's deal with that later. Uh, let's write some TypeScript code. Let bar equals to bar. Uh, this is a string. Right. Um, and export default bar. Save this. But here, let's replace this to TypeScript. Save that, and it still works. Right. So, um, yeah, it just works. Right. TypeScript is uh supported out of the box. But how does that work? Right, I'm supposed to fetch the TypeScript file module, the TypeScript module, um, and it should be a TypeScript module that's been served to the browser. But how does this TypeScript module, uh, how does the browser understand the TypeScript module? How does it work? Right, if you come over here and look at the network tab, uh, let me clear this filter for JS. Realize that yes, we are fetching a TypeScript module, but if you preview the output, you realize that um, all the TypeScript code is already stripped off, right? I try to zoom as much as I can. Um, apparently this is the biggest I can go, right? You can see that, okay, I think I can even get bigger. Okay, right. So you can see that I'm fetching bar.ts, bar, this code, all the TypeScript is being stripped out and being served to the, um, to, to the browser. Right, so uh, which means that this every time when we are trying to fetch a module like this, um, the vit dev server will try to serve a file, but while serving the file, it transforms the file um, into JavaScript that the browser can understand. Right, so this happens in real time. And this transforming logic hopefully reminds you of um, the process that we talk about in module bundling, right? The resolving, the trans, the resolving, the transform or loading, and then the bundling, right? So this is actually the transforming part of it, right? So the same transform that happens um, during a module bundling happens over here on the on real time as well when we are serving code. It's being transformed. All right, let me show you another example. Um, how about let's try to import um, CSS file. So I'm going to write a, yeah, there's already a CSS styles over here. All right, so let's try to import this CSS styles instead. Right, so I come over here, uh, import um, styles, CSS, let's save this. All right. Let's come over here. Uh, you see that this style CSS is loaded in the browser. And if you preview, you see that this is being transformed into JavaScript code. Now you can see JavaScript code instead. So again, that's like a transforming happening in real time. The CSS is being transformed into a JavaScript code and yeah, and served to the browser. 
Okay, so let's disable the cache and do a hard refresh again. Um, and let's take a look at the waterfall. You probably noticed that um, foo, right, imports bar, bar imports the styles, styles import this, which is this, right? And we mentioned about network waterfall, right? So here, uh, this happens, and then the bar can only be downloaded when when foo is is parsed and ready and bar and, and, and the style, if you try to zoom in and take a look over here, style can only be downloaded after, you know, you parse the bar.ts modules, right? So the network waterfall still is still happening. Uh, it's, it's not going to go away because of, you know, using vids or what other tools for now, uh, but, um, because we are serving all these files from our file, local file server, uh, fetching it, transforming it on the fly, and returning to the browser, still it's still very fast. It's still pretty fast, and you can't notice the uh, the lagginess in it. So this covers the dev server section and the watch mode section that we usually talk about, right? You don't have to. Uh, you just run yarn, You just use a uh, vids to scale for a project yarn dev, and that's it. You don't have to do anything special anymore. You don't have to pr provide a special flag and things like that um, because it's it's here, right? So it's just the vid command for dev, right? So now um, in reverse order, because usually we talk about bar building first and then we watch, talk about the watch mode and development mode. Now we're going to go back to the build mode, which is the vid build, which is a build command, right? So here, let's, let's try to do that. Yarn build. Um, and now it builds the all the code into a this folder, right? So now you have a index HTML, um, and which is a pretty uh, optimized build, if you if you ask me, right? So why would I say so? Because if you take a look over here, all the CSS is built into an external CSS file, so it's not loaded by JavaScript. So a browser can you know fetch it on in parallel to fetch the CSS files. So for CSS files, these are all the CSS code that we wrote. Uh, it's minified, yeah, not surprising. Uh, for JavaScript file, uh, it's minified, but let's try to format this. So if you take a look over here, this uh, this L thing, let's collapse this, but, uh, but beyond that, uh, the code that we have over here are basically similar to what we built with rollup, right? Full imports bar, bar is a string, and all this is, built into this, right? Everything lays flat over here, right? And in fact, it is built by Rollup, right? Vit uses Rollup under the hood to do the production build, to do to use uh, Rollup to build it for them. So that it's not a new module bundle re-implemented from scratch, but it's using Rollup. So to finish up, let's round back to this L function. Uh, quickly exp uh, explain what this is. This is basically a polyfill for the module preload. Right? If your browser supports module preload, then it does nothing. But if it does not, then it has its own polyfill. Right? So let's make sure that if you use module preloads link, uh, that works as well. So um, let's see, that's it about the build um, for vid. But usually we talk about using the common line. We also talk about how we can use a node API to do the development as well, to do anything basically, right? Right now we talk about the watch mode, uh, uh, so the development mode as well as the build mode. Um, let's see how we can use a node API to do that for us, right? Sometimes you want to integrate vids in your pipeline. Uh, you don't want to run the vids command, you want to integrate in, then let's take a look at how we can do that. Right, so uh, let's come over here, create a new file called build with vid.js. So first thing is we're gonna import vid, vid require vid. So next thing is we're gonna use vid.build, vid.build. And cool thing about this is you can see that um, all vid API has type annotation. So it's, it's telling me what to type. So here what I need is the root, which is the entry folder, right? So here, uh, we are going to build, the entry will be from the index HTML of this root folder. So all of these files are going to be bundled in um, from index HTML. So anything that's referenced from index HTML, we're going to bundle in. 
So I'm going to say roots is in our the current directory in this case. Uh, if it's a different directory, you have to specify that. And I'm going to say build options, which has the rollup options. Um, I'm going to add rollup output um, option, right? So this is going to customize our output folder, right? So this is something that we built. Just now we built with the, uh, the node CLI. Uh, yeah, the CLI, right? The vids command. Right now we're going to build something with the node API. So we're going to say um, this node, right? And this actually has to be an absolute path. So I'm going to import path and say path.join current directory with a this node folder. So let's run this. So this vid build, if you look at here, the types is that it returns a promise. Um, but we're going to just ignore the promise right now. Uh, once it's resolved, uh, the command will end. Right, so let's try to build that. Let's note uh, build with vid. Oh, okay. Sorry. Output will need to be a directory. Dear. Right. Yeah, yeah. Silly me. Okay. Let's try to build it again. And now we see a this note folder with all the build code similar to the this folder. I'm not sure where is it gone. Probably we, we deleted just now accidentally, right? So yeah, build, I'll build in a this folder, which is exactly the same as a this node folder that we built with the, our node API over here, right? So how about starting a dev server? Well, it's almost the same thing, right? So it's, um, we can use create server uh, instead. And the configuration are almost the same. So these are the build. Uh, you can have it here. You can or, or you can ignore it. Um, so you run node build with vid. Uh, this will create a server, right? So what that means is that uh, you can hold on. I think I missed out something, right? So this creates a server, which means we, okay, that then that's a promise that gives us a server, right? Server dot listen to a port. Um, let's see, server listens to, I think we can pass some options over here, right? So server port is two, three, four, okay, let me just, just now we were three, zero, 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 right? Let's do a three, zero, zero, one. Um, let's just add console just in case we know it's which ready. Let's try start this. No build with it. Although I need to rename this script, it's no longer building. It's it's like start a dev server with it. Server is ready. Let's try uh, local host three zero zero one. You see our hello world over here. If I come over here and make change, just sorry, this is this folder. Come over here, make changes like by world. I save this. Come over here. This is updated immediately. So hot reloading and everything still works. Um, it is yeah. You you can just integrate it this way, right? So this returns a server. Server listen to this, right? So there's a few some options for server, and you can use your server to be part integrate to be part of your. Um, you can be part of your bigger server that you have, right? So for example, you have your express server or Koa server that serves some API and you can have some part of it uh, is being served from this vid server that, that does the things that vid does for you, right? So that's that's how you would in, uh, integrate a vid dev server in, in anything with the vid uh, node API. So using vid is, simple in the sense that you don't really need to set up a lot of things uh everything is set up with for you with the scaffolding commands and you know there's a lot of things out of the box you don't have to customize or modify anything for it right so even like the the scaffold project itself does not even have like a config file for you but if you want to customize things right what you need to do is to create a vid.config.js file so vid.config dot js file and this file um you can export default a object uh and probably you would need to say import 
define config define config over here all right so this is the config so let's take a look at what are the configurations that's available for vit right, so as our tradition goes we talk about the three steps three phases of the module bundling we have the resolving the transforming and the bundling right so for resolving over here you can find resolve configurations for resolving like resolve alias the dupe resolve conditions resolve min fields and stuff like that when transforming you have like yes build configuration css post css and stuff like that and for the bundling bundling will be happening during the build time so it will be in the build options so here these are the build options that you can specify and these options only apply during the build time right so if you run vits command the yarn dev then you only use these shared options um, and then if you're using vits build or like the yarn build then these options will these additional options will apply um, because this uh, options that you specify for building right so that's are the options for vit similar to all module bundlers that we talk about you can create plugins and you can specify plugins for vit so vit plugins there are some official plugins for vit but the most interesting thing is that vit itself supports most of the rollup plugins Right. Um, if you come over here and take a look over here, say rollup plugin, um, there's this section called rollup plugin compatibility. Vit's build step are very similar to rollups. So most of the hooks that you have in rollup can be a, have like a one-to-one -one mapping to uh, Vit, uh, except a few hooks. Right. So if you're using a module pass hooks, then your plugin itself, the rollup plugin itself cannot be used in Vits because Vit does not have this uh, lifecycle event, uh, lifecycle hooks. And if you have some sort of strong coupling for the bundling and the output, then um, you may run into some errors uh, when you use that plugin in Vits. But beyond that, like most rollup plugins will be able to be used in Vits. And on the other way, uh, Vit has, if you look at the authoring a plugin uh, section of Vit, actually Vit um, ro plugin systems um, has this interface called the universal hooks. Right? So these hooks are the same hooks function that you see in Rollup. Right? So the name of the hooks, the things that's available, the arguments are the same. You can use a vit plugin if using these hooks uh, only then you can use it in rollup so they are the same that's why rollup plugin can be used in vit and vit plugin can be used in rollup so there's this concept called a universal plugin and if you take a look at wmr uh, you find that they mentioned this as well um, i think vit was inspired by wmr and now you have all like three rollup vit and wmr all supports like in some sense, they have this universal plugin idea where all of them, all of the plugins, the plugins that can be used by all three of these tools have the same hooks, right? Uh, these are the universal hooks. Of course, there are still some Vit specific hooks um, that is not supported by Rollup or WMR, right? So um, you start to see like because of the way that you build are similar, the phase the steps are similar then you start to converge in terms of the plug the plugins api right so that's why i keep emphasizing of the idea of you know resolving transforming and bundling right these steps right uh, resolve and then you load the files and then you transform the files and you bundle the all the modules these steps are almost universally across all the build tools it's just that maybe they use a different terminology or they they are run in different ways but high levels are the same that's why now you have plugins that can be universally used across them sorry for digressing so this is vit plugin so you can use rollup plugin for vit with some caveats and you can use vit plugin for rollup with some caveats and the common ground they have the common build hooks that they have um, is called um, they, they form like a universal hooks that can be used in both vit rollup and wmr 
That's it about vid plugin in this video. So let's do some summary. We've seen why vid, and we've seen how we can use vid through the vid command as well as the vid node API. When we talk about how we can customize vid, um, about three different phases, uh, three different, different configurations, as well as, as we talk about the plugins for vid. So that's it about bundles for now. In coming videos, we'll start going to talk about resolving. Right, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment in the section below. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. And if you like this video, please spam the like button and share this video to your friends, your colleagues, to everyone. So see you in the next video. Bye-bye.